In this tutorial, we are going to demonstrate how to design a flush album. The process is the same for either the 300, 300 hingeless, or 3500 flush albums. A flush album is when the print runs to the edge of the page. The window open here is where you physically design your album. To start, I'm going to explain what all the different buttons and tools do. In the tools box, the first button you will see is the lock button. When this is activated, it prevents anything on the spread from being moved or changed. The next button to the right is the Nudge Layers button. When this is on, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move any layer in the smallest increment. The next button to the right is the Grid Options button. When this is turned on, you will see rulers surrounding the spread. You can use the rulers to align layers, and you can also add guides by clicking on the rulers around the spread and dragging towards the center. Below the tools box is the layers box. This is where you can manually change the layers in your design. The first four boxes you will see are labeled X, Y, W, and H. The X and Y boxes allow you to input coordinates for the layer. The W and H boxes allow you to manually dial in the width and height of your layers. Please note that the software will round your layers to the nearest pixel. The tilt feature allows you to tilt any layer clockwise or counterclockwise. Finally, you will see the Add and Delete buttons. The Add button allows you to add a new layer to the spread. When you click the Add button, a crosshair or plus sign will come up. Simply bring the crosshair over to the spread, click and drag to create a new layer. The Delete button will delete a selected layer. Along the top of the window, you will see more tools. The A button is the text tool. To add text to your spread, simply click this button and then click anywhere on the spread you want to add text. In the corresponding window, you will enter your text. You can also change the font, the size, or the color of that text. And then we'll click OK. The tint feature allows you to change the color of any layer. This, in conjunction with the opacity feature, to the right can allow you to make opaque backgrounds. The Effects button has two options inside, Shadows and Masks. By using either one of these or both of these windows, you can add drop shadows and masks to your layers. Finally, we have the Border Color and Border Size. A border is the line around the layer. The color can be changed as well as the thickness of the border. The lower the number in the drop-down menu, the thinner the border. You can also turn off the border by selecting zero from the drop-down menu. At the bottom of the screen, you will see different templates. There are different groups of templates that range from full spread templates to half spread templates. Do not be concerned about the size of the templates as each of the templates will automatically adjust to fit the size of the spread you are working in. You can also move the layers from any of the templates which you choose to work with. Now that you know what all of the different tools do, you are ready to start using them to design your album. To design your cover, start by double clicking on the cover swatch. It will move over into the right hand pane of the design window. Now we can click on the add button to add a layer for our cover photo. In the ordering phase, if you chose not to add a cover photo, you can skip this step. For this example, I'm going to make a 5x5 five five layer. So in the W and H boxes, I will enter 5 and 5 for my 5x5 five five cover photo. Once the layer is created, I will go and drop my image into this layer by clicking on the Images tab and selecting the appropriate image. Once I have added my image to the layer, I will move my layer to the approximate location I'd like the cover photo to be on the cover of the album. To make the task a little bit easier, I'll turn my grid on and then click and drag the layer with the image inside to the approximate location. This location should correspond to what you chose on the order form. Finally, all I have to do is crop the image. I do that by double clicking on the image in the layer and moving the green crop box. To leave this screen and go back to, to the designer, please click on the return to designer button at the bottom. To move on to designing the inside of the album and to continue from spread to spread, we'll click on the next button at the bottom. Now that your cover is designed, you can start designing the inside of the album. 
By default, the black area cannot be designed, only the white area. This means that your album would start on the right on side 1. If you would like to start with a spread instead of a single side, simply right click on the black and white spread to the left and select start with spread. The spread will now change to all black, meaning you cannot design on that spread. You would now begin designing your first spread right below it in the first white spread. For this example, I will use the default setting and start on side 1. To start, double click on the black and white spread on the left. It will move over to the right side of the design window. To design freehand, you would use the add layers button to create individual image layers. You will then be able to drop individual images into those layers. Once the layers are created, you can move them, change the size, rotate them, or just about anything else to give your album a one-of-a-kind look. When changing the physical appearance of the layers, it makes no difference if they contain an image or not. Some of the other design options are contained within a submenu in the design pane of the composite designer. After you have populated a spread with at least one layer in the design pane, you can right click on any layer to access this submenu. Your options include moving a layer up or down within the order of layers, aligning layers, removing layers, duplicating layers, changing the shape of layers, or changing the layout of the layers. You can also add layers without having to put images in them. To tell a layer you don't want an image, simply access the submenu and then remove the check on the allow image option. Also when designing, you have the option to use templates. To change the group of templates, simply click on the drop down menu and select whatever group of templates you wish to work with. The red X's in the templates mean that those layers can hold an image. If a layer does not have a red X, it means it cannot hold an image. To populate any one of the templates, simply double click on the template and then answer the question, how would you like to use this template? Your options are change full spread, change right side, or change left side. Now all we have to do is go back to our images and drag and drop our images into the layers. And once again we can simply crop our images by double clicking on the image within the layer. When done with that spread, click on the next button at the bottom to continue designing your album. As you design, you may want to add more spreads to your album. To add more spreads, simply click on the Add Spread button in the bottom left hand corner of the design window. You can also move individual spreads within the layout of the album. To do that, right click on the spread you wish to move. Now click on the Move Page option. Finally, pick a number from the menu and your spread will move to that spot. Each number represents one full spread, not a side. So for example, if we were to move the second spread from the number 2 location to the number 4 location, we would right click on the second spread and then choose the number 4 from the drop down menu. Also within this submenu is the option to remove a page. To do this, simply right click on the spread you wish to remove and select the remove page option. When you are about to complete your design, you may notice another half white, half black spread. This is your final spread. You cannot delete this spread or you will not be able to submit the order as you must have a final spread. If by accident you do delete this final spread, you can always add a new one by clicking on the Add Final Spread button at the bottom of the page. Also by default, your album will end on a single side.
If you would like the album to end with a full spread, you can have that option. By simply right clicking on the final spread and selecting the end with spread button, that half black and half white spread will turn all black. The spread above it should be a designed spread. When you have finished designing the final spread of the album, click on the save page button. You are now ready to continue with the ordering process. Finally, click on the finish button. You will now see the final window associated with the ordering phase. In this window, you can order custom end papers, a custom slipcase, request a drop ship address, or indicate any special instructions. When you are finished here, please click on the finish button. You can now continue on to step three, review order. You may also notice these lines along the outer edge of the spreads. This is what we call the trim area. These are set by default at one half inch in from all four sides. This does not mean we are going to trim a half inch off your album. It simply means anything between the blue line and the edge of the spread has the possibility of getting cut during our trim. Normally we trim about one eighth of an inch off all outer sides of the book. Our recommendation is that you keep anything you do not want to be trimmed or have the possibility of being trimmed inside these blue lines.